Huge thanks to Riverside for sponsoring this video. Today, I'm sharing three ways to make better videos in Resolve. If you take each one of these things to heart, the projects you create in DaVinci Resolve are gonna be so much better. Let's go. So here we are in Resolve and I have a little sample video made. It's sort of like a TV show intro, but these tips are applicable whether this is, you know, a 10 second intro or a 45 minute long show. Here's a little intro we have. kind of fun, right? This is kind of a little show opener I made up. Farah loves food. Her name's Farah. She has blue hair and uh, is therefore very cool. Much cooler than I am. I have normal hair. <laughs> We're going to take just a second and do a little bonus tip. If you do any kind of video calls where you record them, whether it's a podcast or whether it's like a meeting, you have to check out Riverside FM. If you don't know, I do a podcast with my buddy Alex. We're in different time zones and we're halfway across the world, but we record pristine audio and crystal clear video with Riverside.fm. They have an online studio where you can just send a link to your guests and they can join just like a Zoom call, but then it records everybody's audio and video separately on their own computer so that you're not relying on a good Wi-Fi signal or anything like that. And then all the video and audio is available in the cloud and you can download it and it's already synced up. You can throw it into Resolve and make your edit, or you can even make a quick edit on their website with the help of some really cool AI tools they have. It'll even automatically switch cameras to show who's talking. It'll make a transcript of your entire recording. It's just the smoothest way to record a podcast, man. I don't know how we would do it without it. And if you sign up with the link below, you can get a discount as well as it helps support my channel. And so it's just good all around. All right, let's get back to the tips. So very first tip, and this is really important if you're shooting with any modern camera, you're probably shooting in log, which means that you should learn a little bit about color management. That's our first tip. Color management, so helpful. So I'm just gonna switch to the color page here and disable all of our color and just kind of page through here. So here's what this footage looks like when it's not graded. This is shot on a Ari and in Ari Log C and it's kind of flat and desaturated, just doesn't look good. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to do some kind of color to this. I'm just gonna reset this clip by right clicking and saying reset all grades and nodes. And I'm gonna close our timeline and our clips so we just have a little bit more room here, close our gallery. You're probably saying, I know what's going on here. I, you know what we gotta do is we gotta up some contrast maybe put a little saturation in this. And so what some people will do is just take this contrast slider and push this up like this, maybe push the saturation up a little bit, maybe push up the gain and we're getting, you know, a nicer looking image, right? We're getting, we're getting there. It's looking, looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit more pushing the gamma, maybe take our temperature sliders and push that a little bit more colder, you know, and we can kind of play around with this until it looks nice. And does it work? Sure. It works. But here's the problem. This entire time, every time I've touched this footage, I'm completely ignoring the fact that when whoever shot this video shot it, they wanted it to look a certain way. They lit this and exposed this for a certain amount of contrast and a certain, you know, light level and all of that stuff because we're starting with this log image that is kind of underexposed and not really bright enough or contrasty enough, doesn't pop enough. We're just kind of taking our own ideas and just like pushing this image around without even considering what the person who shot this wanted it to look like, which you can choose to not care if you want, or if you shot it, then, uh, you know, I guess that's up to you. But there's a whole lot of work that goes into making a pretty shot like this on the production side that you don't necessarily need to redo. <laughs> they spend a lot of time dialing in that exposure and making sure this looks good if the person who's shooting this knows what they're doing, right? And so when we take this image and we just start to like jack up the gain like this, then we're just kind of willy nilly putting that wherever we think it should go. And then pushing this lift down, putting that wherever we think it should go. And then messing with the saturation, putting that wherever we think it should go. And the gamma, like all of that, it's all just making it up as we go. Can we get a nice looking image doing this? Absolutely. Is it the most efficient and responsible way to do it? No way. <laughs> no way. So what do we do instead? Well, that's where color management comes in. What the heck is color management? Color management without all the fanciness, without all the silliness, the silliness that people do, is just scientifically giving you the best starting point for your image that looks as close as possible to what was intended when the person who was shooting this footage shot the footage. So here's our willy-nilly color grade. Looks, looks good, totally usable. I'm gonna right click and just say grab still, just so we can rememberize what this looks like. Then I'm gonna reset 
all grades and notes. Let's put some color management on this. There are a few different ways to do color management. I have some videos on this. Colin Kelly has color management videos. Darren Mostyn has color management videos. If you guys want to get into that, make sure to check them out. Amazing color grading people. But my favorite way to do it is just to add a node and then click on effects. And we're gonna look for an effect called color space transform. Drag this on. And there's a whole bunch of really scary things here. Honestly, the tip is you should learn about this. You should learn about color management. If you're going to be doing your own color grading in any way, shape or form, it's absolutely worth it to learn about color space transforms. Please do that. That's the tip, okay? The practical side here is under input color space, I'm gonna switch this to whatever our input is, which happens to be RE wide gamut three. Our input gamma is RE log C3. Output color space is gonna be rec 709 for our purposes, like that. And then a lot of the time you could probably even just call that good, but I'm actually gonna take this tone mapping and go to luminance mapping and this gamut mapping and turn it to saturation compression. Even if you don't know anything about that, turn tone mapping to luminance mapping, turn gamut mapping to saturation compression, turn your output color space and gamma to rec 709 and set your input color space and gamma to whatever it was when you shot it. If you don't know what it was, find it out. If you don't know it, there's no way to do this. You can't do this without knowing it. You have to know it. If you don't know it, ask somebody who does. If you didn't shoot it, ask the person who shot it. Again, if they're a professional at all, they should know. Okay. Then we can just close this effects panel. This is going to be our color space transform. I'm going to right click and say node label CST. That's called a CST baby. And now you may notice this doesn't look that great. Wow, we did a bunch of work and it doesn't look that great. Super. <laughs> but here's the key. This is as close as possible, scientifically, to what this looked like when we shot it. This is as close as it looked to how it looked through the camera. Now, this is a little underexposed. Which kind of sucks. <laughs> now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to look good right off the bat. It just means that it's going to look how it looked when it was shot, okay? So this is a little underexposed. And what's great is I haven't done anything making things up willy-nilly yet. All I've done is just converted this into looking at all reasonable on this monitor, right? So instead of looking like this, it looks like this, which I'd much rather have this image than this one, right? Now, it's still a little dark. And so before this CST, I can make a node and I could just go into my offset right here and just push this offset master wheel up to give a little bit more exposure. And look at that, just one little slider bloop and it looks pretty darn good. I didn't have to do much of anything. I just push that wheel up and it looks good. I don't have to add saturation. I don't have to add contrast or anything. I might choose to, but like this is a totally legit image with just one adjustment after I put on the CST, so easy. And what's cool about this is I can take this CST and because these are all shot on the same camera, I can put that same CST on all of this stuff and have a really good starting point for where I want to go. So I can take all of this and I'm just going to middle button mouse click. That's just clicking down on the scroll wheel of my mouse right here on this shot number four. That's going to replace all my existing grades. And now I can go through and decide if I like this look on all of these shots. I can just hit up and down on the keyboard, select this first node, and I can have my mouse over this offset wheel and I can decide whether things are dark or light enough. And honestly, like a lot of this works pretty well. Looks pretty good to me. This one, maybe I could take that down just a touch. Maybe I decided this is all a little bit warm. I can push the temperature a little bit cool like that. And if I haven't done anything else to these other shots, I can just, again, middle button mouse click here, replace. And now everything's looks pretty good without a lot of effort, right? Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna save you tons and tons of time, you'll never need to do anything. I'm just saying you can skip all of the guessing, right? Because I didn't guess on any of these clips. This is just as close as possible with a little bit of tweaks to how the cinematographer actually shot this, right? And now if I compare this with my grade that I thought was on the right side, this side is my grade that I did. On the left side is with the CST and look at the difference here. Like we thought this looked good, but look at it with the CST, that looks so much better. Look at the skin tones and everything and like the detail and everything. Oh, the like everything is nicer on the left than it is on the right. So much better. And it was way less work <laughs> and less guessing. So that's the first tip, color management, learn it and use it. Tip number two for making better videos in Resolve. And I know this is gonna be difficult for some of you, but I really recommend that you jump into the Fusion page and you start working with it. Start getting familiar because here's just a really simple example of what you can make just knowing a little bit about Fusion. This really cool 
graphic. So we have this text and it's, you know, designed and put into kind of a logo. We can see the food texture underneath these letters. We have this kind of glittery texture under these letters. And as we play this back, it's animated. It's tracked to the footage and kind of moves as she opens up the box. We have this reveal that kind of reveals with the steam. We're adding some subtle steam over this pizza. There's all this stuff that we can do that maybe is not even that flashy or, or that insane, but really ups your production value with just a few minutes if you're familiar with Fusion. And I'll kind of just walk you through this comp here. So all you have to do is just be over a shot that you want to use in Fusion here in the edit page and then click over to the Fusion page. And that'll open this shot in Fusion and you can do your tracking or your VFX or anything that you want to do right here in Fusion without going into another app or opening up After Effects or whatever. And so that's all I did was just open that up and I built a little composition using some nodes. I ended up taking some text and using that text as a mask for this texture, adding some more text and using that as a mask and putting these all together with a little bit of color management, added a shadow and I tracked the shot to kind of go along with that slight movement as she opens up the pizza box, repositioned it a little bit and then I'm merging it over our original footage and I'm adding a little bit of steam. I can just kind of generate this steam and put it on with a little mask to be right above the pizza here. And I also added a lens flare and so I'm kind of grabbing these lens flares that are generated using the original footage and putting it back over itself so that the flare goes over the steam and over our title here and kind of brings it all together. And then at the end, if you know a little bit about fusion and a little bit about color management, you can have this really nice integrated title that's animated that really kind of takes the feeling of it, the professionalism up a notch if you do it in a tasteful way. And that all just lives right here on the timeline. I don't need to render it out or anything like that. And it can really take my video up a notch. Isn't that so cool? Now, if if you want to get into making things like this, making graphics, tracking things, keying things, animating things, doing visual effects, this YouTube channel is a great place to be. In fact, if you're just getting into Fusion, make sure to check out this link to the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion. This is a way to simplify the seemingly overwhelming amount of nodes inside of Fusion to just nine different nodes that you need to know, and you can make all kinds of really cool stuff in Fusion. It's not as hard as it seems, and I wanna help you and be with you along the way. So check that out, that's a free workshop. There's also a link down in the description. Tip number three is just a quick one. Practice every day. Now, when I say every day, I don't necessarily mean every single day, but on a regular basis, a few times a week. If you want to get good, at making videos in Resolve, literally there is nothing stopping you. All you have to do is open up Resolve and put something in the timeline and make something and render it out and do that over and over again and you will get better. This kind of thing is the perfect example. This is just made with stock footage and I put this edit together that wasn't from a client or anything like that. This isn't for a real show. This is just kind of making up something that's just an example of something that you could do. And the more things you make like this, the more you're going to understand the workflow and you're going to get more familiar with how Resolve works. You're gonna discover things and learn new things. Oh, it's just, it's brilliant. And there is no pressure at all. Spend a few bucks and go get some stock footage. This is such a great tool. Just go out and shoot something with your phone and make an edit and do that over and over and over again because you're going to get better every time and you will be amazed at how much better you are at making videos in Resolve after you've just put in the work and you've just done it a few times. Don't wait to get a job or to be handed an opportunity to invest in yourself. You can do this. So whether it's learning color management or learning fusion or just trying to put together a cohesive video of some kind in Resolve, there's nothing stopping you. This is a free tool. Download the free version, throw some stuff in and make some terrible videos and do it over and over again. And pretty soon you're gonna make great videos. And one more bonus tip. If you want to be a really great editor or a really great colorist or a really good compositor or a really good audio mixer, the people that are really great at these things have put in a lot of time studying these things. And guess what? You can study them for free. All right. So stop making excuses. Go and do it. Do the first two things. Learn some color management, learn some fusion. I want to help you with that one, by the way, throw some stuff in the timeline and make a project. And then tomorrow, make another one and keep going. There's nothing stopping you. Oh, this is so great. If you don't know me, my name is Casey. And yeah, like I said, I, I love Resolve. I, I especially love teaching Fusion. So if you want to dive in and learn more about compositing and motion graphics and animations and all kinds of stuff, I have so 
much stuff on that. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. That's a great thing to do. And of course, make sure to check out that nine nodes workshop that again is totally free. If you're making podcasts or remote interviews or anything, make sure to check out Riverside in the description. You will not regret that either. Thanks for hanging with me. All right. Here's another video you probably like. That's what YouTube thinks anyway. I think I think you just I think you're great.